Hi, everybody. My name is Ryan Hecht, and I am a product manager on the GitHub Copilot team working on the GitHub Copilot CLI. We launched in public preview last month, and we've been shipping every day to bring some more advancements that I can't wait to show you. I'm going to show you what makes the Copilot CLI special, uh, why it's so great to have an agentic AI assistant right in your terminal, and how we're building the Copilot CLI to connect more broadly to the rest of the GitHub Copilot ecosystem. And first, I got a question for you. Well, first I want to show you our lovely uh, startup animation, which I'm just in love with. I love this thing so much. Um, but first, I have a question for all of you. How many of you use GitHub Copilot in VS Code or another IDE? All right. Now, keep, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Now, of all of you, who spends their entire working day in the IDE and never does anything else anywhere else? That's what I thought. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to build the GitHub Copilot CLI. We as developers are spending time SSHing into servers. We're debugging things in containers. We're triaging issues on GitHub.com. We're managing CI CD pipelines, and we're writing deployment scripts. There's a lot of work that we do that doesn't neatly map into an individual IDE or even a multi-purpose code editor like VS Code. And you know, the terminal transcends all the different applications on your computer, right? The terminal is the most powerful computing interface that there is. In the right hands, any task can be accomplished with fine-grained control, customizability, a wealth of open source tooling that does one job and does it really well, and also composable scripting for automation. And Agentic AI in this environment makes everybody a terminal whiz. It gives you an editor agnostic tool to collaborate with, to, um, starting today, connect to the broader GitHub ecosystem and get your work done and focus where, and meet you where you are already in the terminal. Uh, you know, I spoke to a lot of friends over the past several months who have rediscovered the terminal now that AI assistants have met us in here, right? Because it allows you to spend less time hunting down man pages and scouring documentation and more time actually executing and now also incorporating the AI into your automation and all of your scripts. So I want to show you guys a little demo. So we're going to have a situation where I am taking over on call. Where is my mouse? Here it is. Uh, where I'm taking over on call for a friend of mine. Uh, and you know, he maintains a feedback form. And I don't know anything about it. I don't know what code base, I don't know what language the code base is in. I don't know the framework it uses. Um, but just in case any kind of issues come up during the day, I'm going to see what I can do to, uh, to, to work my way through them. Uh, and it looks like design has actually sent me over an image. Uh, so let's open up fixthis.png. What's wrong? Oh, look at that. It looks like there's the feedback, the submit button is uh, overlaying on the page here. So we're going to see what we can do to fix that. Uh, so I'm going to launch Copilot. Now, keep in mind, I don't even have the repo downloaded. Um, you know, it's not cloned on my computer, I, and I don't know anything about it. So I'm just going to have Copilot uh, clone the feedback repo and set us up to run it. Now, this is my first wonderful application of the GitHub Copilot CLI. Uh, it's getting started in a new application and getting started in a new code base. You don't know, uh, you know what you're going to need to run it on your machine, uh, but Copilot's able to look at the documentation really quickly, figure out the stack, figure out the dependencies that you need um, with you know, minimal input from you. And one input that I do need to give is permission to run commands. By default, it's going to ask me for permission to run all these different commands on my computer. In this case, uh, we want to clone the actual repository and then check out what's inside of it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And um, Copilot's going to tell me what it's doing. It's setting up the feedback repository. Uh, you know, it's looking at the readme for setup instructions. And it looks like it's found that it's a, pa a package.json. Uh, so in this case, it's just going to go ahead and an NPM install, I would imagine, once it figures out what, what it needs to do there. Um, but if it was more complicated than an NPM install, if I had to install a JVM, if I had to you know, install the right version of Go, uh, maybe even set up a Python virtual environment, it's going to be able to do all of that for me. Uh, and in this case, it has um, run npm install, and it set us all up. So that's wonderful. Uh, and it's even given us a nice head start. Hey, look, you could just run npm run dev to run the dev server. So I'm going to do that, npm run dev. And uh, well, I'm on the right directory, so that's uh, npm run dev. And uh-oh, it looks like port 3000 is already in use. That's right. Earlier, I was working on something else uh, that was using that port. 
And these are the kinds of things that are little workflow killers when you're getting started in something because I know that I can use the ls of command. There's certain, a certain flag I can give in a certain syntax to check what, um, uh, what port is being used. But it's way easier just to defer that to Copilot. So I could say, what is using, currently using port 3000? And uh, without needing to go and look up the right, the right flags for the command, without needing to look at the man pages to remember how to use it, um, I can tell, okay, it's that colon before the port that I personally always forget. And so it's great that I can just um, say, all right, cool, you can use LSUV for the rest of our session, and it can run that. And it'll come back and say, hey, here's the process ID of what was using uh, port 3000. And um, I can have Copilot kill it, or if I know the kill command, kill-9, and the process ID, I run that one a lot. So I can use an exclamation point to just quickly do kill-9, 9464, and boom, now I've killed it. And so let me go back over here, and now I can run npm run dev again. And now we are actually uh, running on uh, localhost uh, port 3000. So we can go over there and check it out, localhost 3000. And sure thing, there is a bug here. Uh, so let's go ahead. So if you'll remember, we had this image. So I'm going to copy this image into our repository here and open up Copilot again. So you know, I don't even want to spend time looking through all the code files to figure out where the change is. I'm just going to have Copilot um, fix the bug shown in at fix this, oh, fix this .png. So I'm going to at mention the file. Click enter, that's an image, and Copilot's going to read the image. That's a functionality that we added a couple of weeks ago. Um, so it sees the bug. It looks like the button's overlapping the text area. And so now I can just go through and figure out um, where the right folder is and where the right file is to make that change. It's probably just a, sim a simple little CSS bug. Uh, and sure enough, yep, that's what it was. And so it's going to go through and fix that itself. And of course, this is on the level of something that you could do in your IDE. Um, but being able to do it uh, in the terminal means that I can have my same session and go through and it transcends the IDE and I can do other tasks that maybe I wouldn't be doing in the IDE as well. Uh, so I'm going to tell it that it can indeed change that CSS file and also do file operations for the rest of the session. And it looks like it had a couple of changes it wanted to queue up, so it's keeping me in the loop about what it's doing, which is wonderful. And now it says that it's fixed, so why don't we see if it is indeed fixed? And uh, well, it's not quite fixed. Um, so uh, what we can do uh, now is I can, um, you know, I don't have enough time to necessarily go through and, um, and, and actually make sure that all of that's fixed. Um, but before I commit and before I actually dispatch, what I'm going to do, I'm going to dispatch Copilot Coding Agent to finish the rest of this asynchronously for me. Before I do that, though, uh, I can't just push these changes willy-nilly because my team has very strict accessibility requirements. And I don't always know what all of those are. And luckily, my team has a custom agent, which was just released today for GitHub Copilot as well, that defines all of our accessibility rules. It has all the right MCP tools to check on um, all, those, all those guardrails. So I can do slash agent and look at the accessibility reviewer. And I can say, uh, review our changes. And so that's it. I don't need to go through and figure out what all of those uh, standards are. The accessibility agent can just go look at my changes and um, you know, the accessibility team has already gone through and written up this wonderful custom agent that has all of the things that we need. Um, and it looks like um, it's found a critical accessibility issue. Um, and it wants to make that change. And it's just going to do that for me, which is, uh, which is pretty wonderful. And um, OK, that's great. Um, but we haven't fixed the bug yet, right? There's still some things that need to be done. And I also want to know if there's any issues that have already been opened in this repository uh, that might map to what we've already been doing. Luckily, the Copilot CLI ships with the GitHub MCP server. Uh, so we can look up anything that is um, you know, on the GitHub repo uh, without needing to actually go to .com. So I can say, are there any open issues that map to the work we're doing? And the GitHub MCP server will go. And, um, and search for all of our issues. Uh, first, it's verifying that we are indeed in a uh, GitHub repository, and we are. And so it's found an issue, and what's it going to say? It looks like, OK, well, it doesn't know that that's not actually fixed. Uh, but there's also another part of this issue as well, that the button is oversized on mobile. Um, and so what we're going to do, um, 
is, all right, and it, the accessibility agent has given me all of its recommendations too. I didn't realize I was still in there. Uh, but I want to delegate the rest of this to Copilot coding agent, because I've got other things to do, right? So I'm going to do slash delegate, which is another new command that we have. Um, and I can say, uh, finish fixing the issue outlined in number one, and use the playwright MCP server uh, to ensure that it is fixed. And so what this is going to do is stage all of my changes. It's going to commit them to a new branch. And then Copilot Coding Agent is going to open a PR and then dispatch itself to go and do that work asynchronously. So now I can move on to bigger and better things with my day. Uh, and so now that PR is opened, I can click on it so I can know that this is the PR where all the work will eventually be. Uh, and eventually, Copilot is going to pick it up and do the wonderful Copilot Coding Agent flow um, that we're all familiar with. And uh, you know, this is really powerful because it lets me do most of the work synchronously and then delegate the rest out to Copilot uh, when there's you know, maybe more annoying work, maybe you know, work that I, I don't entirely know how I want to accomplish yet, and I can have it noodle away in the background as I do other things. But there's more to this than, um, than just that. Because we're in the terminal, uh, we can do things a uh, headlessly as well. And so remember that, so we have our, our dev server still running over here. Remember when we were trying to kill whatever was running on port 3000? I can do this headlessly in Copilot. Uh, so I'm going to do allow all tools, and then the dash P flag here. I'm going to say kill the process using port 3000. So obviously this is a very basic terminal-based task, killing something that's using a port. Uh, but you could think of a lot of other more complex scenarios that you could hook this up into a script that you can then reuse over and over again. You could use it in a, uh, an actions workflow or some other automation use case in order to have it um, you know, bring this AI goodness into your other scriptable, composable workflows. And so in this case, it, uh, it found it, it killed it, so it was able to do ls of and then pipe that over to xargs. Um, but you know, I did allow all tools. You probably don't want to do that in your actual environment unless you're running in a container or something. Uh, and so luckily, we have some flags that you can pass to only allow access to certain directories, only allow access to certain tools, um, actually explicitly deny access to certain tools. Um, so then we hear a lot, you know, hey, it's fine if the tool is using Git to do all kinds of things. Please don't actually push it up. I want a human to do that in the end. And so there's the ability to do things like that as well. And um, you can authenticate um, interactively with a slash login command. So you can use the OAuth to, to authenticate in there. Um, but you can also use a personal access token. So again, you can hook it up to automations. And we're working on bringing new uh, authentication methods that are more enterprise friendly, so org owned PATs and all of that uh, to you folks very soon. And we're doing a lot when it comes to uh, shipping updates. So since we first released this last month, we've shipped a new release every single working day. And you can see like there's several bullet points in each of these releases. Uh, so we're really doing what we can to make this the best AI assistant in the terminal that we can. And we're building it with all of you. Uh, so we have open issues on our repository. And uh, folks have been letting us know what they want to see. And we have been hard at work uh, closing a lot of these issues as well and implementing a lot of things that all of you folks want to see. So uh, if you want to get started with this, it is incredibly easy. We are an NPM module. And you can do npm install dash g at github slash copilot. Um, on, on, on Windows, on Mac OS, on Linux, and on Windows that's both in WSL and also natively in PowerShell. And uh, like I said, come join us on our public repo and, um, and, and come join the conversation and, uh, and help, help, build, help us build the best terminal-based AI assistant that we possibly can. I'm so looking forward to having been on this journey with everybody so far over the past month and continuing to be on this journey with you all as we make strides into the future. Thank you all very much.